So I made this little wristlet, and I'm gonna show you in this video how to make this. I don't make a lot of purses, so you purse makers go easy on me, because I am a saddle maker, not a purse maker. But I came up with this little thing, and it seems to work pretty good. Uh, they're a great way to use up your scrap. We're gonna get into the video and uh, show you how a saddle maker makes a purse. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we've got all our parts cut. And if you've got the pattern pack, then you, you have those. You can cut all your parts out. These two top panel pieces for the body of the purse are cut from some, uh, I think it's five, six ounce bed shin leather. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tape those up with some painter's tape. You could certainly do, um, I usually use some poster board and glue it down. But on this application here, we're just gonna use painter's tape, it's quicker. And here we're gonna go ahead and get some tooling done. And uh, I'll show y'all kind of the process that I did for the patterns on this particular purse here. All right, so here we've tooled all of our pieces. And like I said, this is about a five to six ounce uh, veg tan leather. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and edge these. I'm using our number one Berry King edger. And if you've seen our video on how I slick my edges and stuff, you'll notice that I'm gonna slick these uh, because they are kind of thin. We're just gonna slick those flat on the bench. But I'm just gonna edge uh, both sides of these, get them slicked down, and then we'll go ahead and do the same to the zipper piece and get those ready for dye and antique. So here I just have a simple paintbrush. Um, you can use any kind, of, any size you can find at Hobby Lobby, just a nice cheap paintbrush. And I use that just so that I have a little bit more control when I'm applying glue to one of the zippers uh, or anything really small. I'll use one of those brushes to get into tight places and they work really well. And so we're just gonna put two coats of glue on our zipper piece and on the zipper. That's a nine inch zipper that we uh, bought from Hobby Lobby. And I do put two coats of glue, one on the zipper and one on the uh, actual leather zipper piece and two coats will ensure that that zipper sticks really well. Sometimes that fabric doesn't want to stick real good unless you put two good coats on there. So be sure and do two and let them dry really well. Now this is just a little trick to clean these brushes is I'll take my roughing tool 
there's just a wire rougher and I'll just let that kind of use it to scrape that glue out of the bristles of that brush and that glue dries pretty quick in those little brushes and so as you do that you go with the bristles um, try not to break any of them off and it'll just clean that glue out of there and uh, you can sure mix a little bit of acetone in there and clean the brush with that as well but that's the best way I found and if you use that that application that brush will last you for quite a while so I just kind of keep one of those on my bench for when I need it and then use that wire brush to take it out take the glue out whenever I'm done with it all right so our glue is dried well try not to wait too long uh, I'd rather have that glue just a little bit too wet than uh, than way too dry or it won't stick very well and then we're just going to line the zipper up down the center of our of our long hole that we made, the slot that we made for the zipper. And we're doing this the almost the exact same way that we did on the shave kit video. I'll put links to all these other videos in the uh, in the description as well. But this is the same way I do it on our um, on our shave kit. So if you did one of those, you'll kind of recognize the application there. And we'll just glue that in place and be sure it's sealed down really well. And then we'll go ahead and sew that zipper in place. And I'm sewing mine on a Singer uh, 3115. It's just a little boot top machine, and it works really well for this, but you could certainly hand sew it or uh, even buck stitch it in, I guess, or whatever you want to do just to get that zipper sewn into that zipper panel piece. So now we have our zipper sewn in place. We're just going to cut our stitches. Now with this piece here, I like to take scissors and just trim off at an angle the any excess fabric from that zipper and just kind of cut it off flush uh, with your stitches there so you don't see that uh, hanging out whenever we put the purse together. And you can burn that down too if you wanted to. Uh, I didn't on this one. I may have hit it with a lighter a little bit, but just something to burn it down. But you've got it stitched in so it shouldn't go anywhere. So now I've sprayed the back side or the flesh side of the zipper panel and I'm just going to take my skiver and skive down that edge. That edge there is going to be where the purse body actually sews to and so we want to be sure that that's skived down nice to a nice feathered edge and that way it doesn't create a bump inside the purse. And so you can just take a skiving blade or fringe edge or however you'd like to do it and just take some of that off. And this thin, I think this is 5 ounce or 4 ounce. Uh, for the zipper panel piece and so moistening it a little bit with a spray bottle usually helps to skive that. Okay, so here on our pattern, if you look, we've got a line, and if you bought the pattern pack, you'll see a line right there. That's basically where our purse body will line up on the top of that zipper panel. So it'll line up to, to that line, so we need to mark that now on the zipper piece so that we have it. And you can either do this with calipers, or you can make some marks and then use a straight edge. Just anything to kind of transfer that little little line there. So as you can see here, here's our top panel for our purse body. And so you can see how that lines up on the pattern to that mark line. And so that's the line that we're going to transfer. And I'm just going to take my calipers and set it at my mark. Um, and then just scribe me a little line. And try not to scratch that too much. Just make a little, little line you can see whenever you go to glue these pieces together. So now I'm going to take all my panels and I'm going to go ahead and put my edge dial on there. We've already slicked them. The edges have dried really well and so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of uh, dark brown dye is what I'm using there and we're just going to go ahead and dye the edges so they're ready to be assembled and uh, antiqued and everything. And so on this purse here, the one that I'm building, I'm just going to go ahead and do an oil finish. 
I'm not going to antique or do any dye work or anything like that. You can certainly refer to any of my other videos as far as dyeing or antiquing. And uh, it, but if you are going to do any antiquing or dye work, you or paint work, you would want to do that um, at this stage right here, roughly, um, before we assemble the purse and everything. So, obviously, any kind of finish work, we're going to finish all the panels that are veg tanned or tooled or anything like that. We're going to go ahead and get a good finish on those before we begin assembly. And here I'm just using uh, olive oil. That's all I use is uh, just regular olive oil. You don't have to use extra virgin, just any kind of regular olive oil. And I'm just going to put a pretty good coat on this one. I want the leather fairly dark. And so I'm going to continue adding coats until I get to the, uh, the shade that I want as far as the leather color. And here I'm going to put our finish coat on these pieces. Like I said, we're going to go and get them completely done as far as the finish work. And I just use tan coat. And you can buy that tan coat in a quart jar or even a four ounce bottle, I believe. And um, I usually get it at Weaver Leather. Um, it's a pretty popular finish, but it's nice and soft. It's not a hard um, lacquer type finish base or anything like that. And it gives it a really, really pretty color. And you can get oil through it later if you need to. So the panels are at the color that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and seal them off with a tan coat and they'll be ready to be assembled. Alright, so there's our panels and there's our purse body. Now I'm going to use this turquoise uh, chap split so it's just a suede split leather and that's what I'm going to use for this purse and I'm going to go ahead and put my purse body pattern on there and I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of chalk and I'm just going to mark there's a lineup mark on the pattern that's basically just the very bottom of that scalloped uh, top panel and I'm just going to put a little mark on this suede I'm using chalk just because it it'll rub off easy and we can also see it on that on that suede leather and that way we have some kind of lineup mark see how far down it is now these top panels are a little longer they're supposed to be set higher on the purse body so on that turquoise leather we're going to make a mark off the top of the top panel of a quarter inch and all this is marked on the patterns but i just come down about a quarter inch and run a line and that line is actually where that turquoise leather will line up to on the back side when we glue it in place i do this so that you don't have to be as careful skiving down the back side of that turquoise leather so that you don't see it in between that top panel and the zipper and so you'll kind of see that here in just a second but that's all we're doing is making a lineup mark so as you can see here we're going to line the bottom of that top panel up with that chalk mark that we made and then that's going to leave a little overhang where that top panel hangs over that turquoise leather just a little bit it's about a quarter inch and so as you can see there we've got a little bit of overhang so now when we sky that turquoise leather down a little bit so it's smooth you won't end up seeing that turquoise d duck out from underneath there between that and the zipper and so we're going to go ahead and make sure it's all lined up and then i like to take a pencil or you can use chalk you can use whatever you want but just something to kind of mark where that panel is going to be so we know where to put our glue when we glue these two panels to the turquoise leather. So now I'm going to take my groover and I'm going to go ahead and groove our stitch line. It's a little easier to do this now before we go ahead and glue them in place and stuff. And so I'm going to go ahead and groove my, my stitch lines on there and that way they're ready to go once they're glued on we can go ahead and sew them up. And so now what we're going to do is go ahead and take our skiver and we're just going to skive off the top edge of the purse body. Uh, depending on the material that you decide to use on this, that can be more challenging or less. But we're going to go ahead and take whatever it is. I would like to take a little bit off of that edge just so that it makes a smooth transition underneath that top scallop piece, the tooled piece of leather that we're going to put on top of it. 
and I want to be sure that there's not a bump under there or anything. So depending on the thickness of your material and uh, and what the material is, that'll kind of determine how much skiving you need to do in this top area. But I like to take some off there so it's a nice transition. So now we're ready to glue the panels to the purse bodies. And so we've already marked it with our pencil and we've done our skiving and we've already stitch grooved the tooled portions. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on um, all the pieces that are going to be glued together. And try to stay within your lines there, because especially if you're using the suede, because it's virtually impossible to get it off if you get it outside of those lines. And all we really need here is just a little bit of glue there to hold those panels in place while we sew them. So now our glue is nice and tacky and so I've done two coats to make sure they stick really good. And now we're just going to use that line that we drew at a quarter inch. We're going to go ahead and use that as our lineup on the back side of those top panels. And we're going to go ahead and glue those in place. And if you marked everything and, and didn't get outside of your lines you shouldn't see any glue there in the front out from underneath that panel. And so we'll just glue those down really well. And so now we're going to make sure that everything fits to our lineup marks that we drew on the zipper piece and just kind of make sure nothing's stretched out of, out of whack or anything and make sure everything's going to line up. And like I said, those lines that we made with the calipers when we put that zipper piece together, that's what we're lining up there. So you should have some space between the zipper and the top panel. And so now we're just going to put glue along the top edge there of the purse body pieces and along the edge of the zipper panel and glue those in place where they're going to go and then we can when we sew each of the top panels we'll actually be sewing the zipper piece in as well. And so here I like to find the center of my zipper so it's a nine inch zipper so I'm going to measure down in there and I'm going to measure uh, four and a half inches and I'm going to put a little mark just a little little mark there at four and a half on each side of that zipper and then I'm going to do the same to the top panels of the purse body along that top edge. What that's going to do is just when you go to glue them in place onto the zipper piece you can line up on those center marks and just make sure that each panel is exactly across from one another and are lined up straight. And so if you go off a center mark versus trying to line each end up you can get off a little bit and vary. So we're going to go ahead and use center lines to go ahead and make sure that when we glue those in place they're lined up correctly. And so right here I've got just a little piece of sandpaper and I'm going to go ahead and scratch on that zipper piece where we're going to put our glue. The reason I'm doing that is because we've already put tan coat on there and oil and so sometimes that glue won't stick very good but if it's got a finish on it. But if you go ahead and scratch it with just some sandpaper or you can even use the edge of your knife. Just something to break that finish and to kind of scratch that leather up just a little bit since it is the smooth side. And so we want to kind of scratch that a little bit just so the glue uh, adheres well. And so I'm just going to put glue. I'm using two coats. Like I said, I almost use two coats on everything. But I'll put glue on the zipper piece on each edge and then on the top edge of the purse body. And we'll let those two coats dry really good. And then we'll go ahead and glue them together. So as you can see there, our glue is nice and tacky, and so we're going to line up with our center marks that we put at four and a half there for a nine inch zipper, and we're going to start in the middle and just line them up on the scribe line that we made on the running down the edge of the zipper piece, and go ahead and glue these in place. If we did everything right, they should be lined up really well or straight across from each other, so we'll glue one on one side and one on the other. And so here all we're going to do is just sew the top panel. And so while we're sewing this, we're going to sew each one independently. But as we do that, we're going to sew the turquoise to the top panel and both of those to the zipper all in one sewing application. So we won't be 
having to sew the panel to the turquoise then come back and attach it to the zipper if you do it this way you can kind of sew everything at, at one setting and not have to come back and it just kind of saves you a little bit of time but you can see how that right there is just sewing that zipper in place as well as the turquoise in place to the top panel And so now here I'm just cutting all my stitches and we'll just cut those down. Any of them that I can burn, I'll go ahead and burn the stitches, but a lot of times I'll just cut them because I backstitch or overstitch. And so as you can see there, those panels line up pretty well with the one across from it. So on this particular purse, I'm going to sew it inside out and then flip it right side out. That's going to hide our stitches and kind of leave more of a pleated seam, and so you won't see that. So what we're going to do is face up where you can see the tooling and see the top panels. We're going to put a small amount of glue along the edge of that turquoise leather or, or around the purse body. Now if you're using this suede, again, be very careful not to get the glue anywhere that won't be stitched down or, or when you turn it right side out to where it'll show because you won't be able to get it off. So on here I'm putting absolutely only enough to hold it in place while I'm sewing. Um, if, if you get any, anywhere outside where that stitch isn't going to catch it and when you flip it out you'll see it. And so um, if you're using a, a, a full grain chap leather or something like that you can take some um, gum rubber or something and, and rub it off and the glue will pop off you won't even see it but um, very easy to clean up but on the suede be very careful again just so that you don't see any all right so our glue is tacky and so i'm going to sew this one inside out so we're going to glue it inside out be sure that you leave your zipper open i made a mistake on the very first one and forgot to open the zipper before I sewed it inside out like that and it is virtually impossible to open a zipper from the underneath side um, so I had a heck of a time trying to get that zipper open so that I could flip it inside or right side out so just fair warning be sure if you're gonna do this uh, this way and turn it inside out uh, be sure that you have the zipper open whenever you sew it shut and so that glue is just hold again just holding the leather in place while I sew it and we're going to go ahead and make one stitch line around the edge and that will close the purse up. And so here we're just sewing along the edge. Check and be sure that your material isn't shifting if you're using an oil tan or something that's a little softer or doesn't glue as well. Um, as you come around that corner you want to be sure that your two panels haven't shifted um, you want to be sure you're stitching through both pieces of material evenly and uh, you could definitely if you wanted to make this purse a little bit stronger or stouter I'm not sure how stout a purse has to be but if you wanted it a little bit to ensure it, it's a little bit stronger you could always do two rows of stitching here there's enough room in the pattern to do that just don't get too far in off your edge when you sew this I'm, a, I'm just eyeballing this as I'm sewing it but you could certainly scribe you a line on the suede it's almost impossible to scribe a line but you could do something to, to or if you have a guide I guess you can use that as you're sewing but just try not to get too far in there as it'll make it a little bit more difficult to turn it inside out and so here we're just going to cut our stitches we've sewn all the way around the edge and we're just going to clip those stitches off so that you don't see them I guess you could certainly hand stitch that top edge if you're worried about it coming undone um, but it, it was pretty stout on that one even with just that suede so I just did the one stitch line and it seems to be fairly stout. Now I like to take a razor blade and then trim as close to those stitches as I possibly can just to kind of cut down on the the leftover material on the inside of the purse once we turn it inside or right side out 
um, I don't want a, a lot of material past those stitches just kind of sticking up inside the purse so I go ahead and trim as close as I can uh, you can certainly not do that it doesn't really make a difference just makes it a little bit less to deal with on the inside of the purse okay so here we're going to start turning it right side out and I start at the corners and kind of get those started forward and you just got to kind of be tender with it and take your time don't get in a big hurry so that you don't rip anything but just start working it uh, just to try to push the corners if you can get the corners kind of headed that way and get one out then usually the other one will follow and uh, like I said just be careful especially up there at the top where your stitches started and stopped at the very top edge of the purse and then once you get it right side out then I just kind of go through there and try to get as much slack as I can out of my seam and push it out with the tips of my fingers and just kind of be sure that it's completely pushed out along the seam there and uh, that'll ensure that the purse has this desired shape that you were after or the desired shape of the pattern that uh, you first made so be sure that you just kind of take your time with this part this part and don't get in too big of a hurry So there it is. If you uh, did everything correctly, the zipper should track fine. Uh, the purse should have a, a good uniform shape and uh, you shouldn't see any of your stitches if you turned it inside out. Now here we've got a D ring and that you could use an O ring, you can use anything you want, but I push one of the tabs of the zipper into the purse and the other tab I leave hanging out. And that's so that I can get that D mounted on. But see that little tab there just kind of hangs out in there and you could certainly use it too and put a D on that side and have a shoulder strap if you wanted to but it also just kind of keeps stuff from bouncing out of that little corner there and so I'll just put that D in place and then we're just going to mount that with a little rivet a little speed rivet or something like that just something to keep that little D in place and that's where we'll put our little wristlet strap and so here I'm just using a little double cap speed rivet real short one because uh, that leather's not very thick and those are certainly more than enough to hold that little D in place and so we just punched a number two hole in the strap and we're gonna mount the D alright so we got the bag done all we've got to do now we've got our I always like to put just a little deal right here for the zipper we've got this D here this D is gonna be for the little strap now you only need a big enough strap to be able to fit your hand through generally goes around the wrist and then you just hold on to it so we're gonna go ahead and just make a little simple strap we're not gonna to get too complicated you can for sure do a braided strap you can do um, any kind you can do a rawhide braided strap a leather braided strap and if you're into braiding this is a great little project to kind of do both have a little little bit of your braiding work on the item as well as your tooling work and your and your construction obviously I am NOT a braider so I'm not going to um, try to act like I'm a braider in this video and show you how to braid a strap all we're gonna do is make a very simple little strap for this number of different ways to make it so the only thing that this strap needs to do is be able to fit your hand through it doesn't need to be very long and so it's just going to be out of this really nice um, it's a chrome tan leather but it's kind of got a latigo look about it um, I picked this up from Lewis Leather Sales which I'll put the link down in the description below it's also where you can get some exotics and stuff like that but they had some of this and it's very very pretty leather um, it's got a little bit of a pull up to it it's burgundy in color very nice soft uh, gloss finish um, very very happy with this stuff for applications like this for a woman's purse it's going to make a very very nice strap uh, very simple delicate and it'll look really really nice so we're going to cut that and make that real quick all right so i'm just going to strip off a piece of 3 8 inch lace off of this so i just did 3 8 so you could definitely do quarter or something heavier if you're just going to do a flat strap but i'm just going to strip that off right quick and then I'm going to use my Hanson uh, lace cutter and I'm just going to bevel the ends, uh, the inside, the flesh side of the strap just to make it a little bit more comfortable, give it more of a little bit of a finished look. And so I'm just going to bevel both, at, both sides of that. And so here I'm just going to point the uh, tip of my lace 
on each end and that piece of lace I ended up using a 24 inch piece of lace so a couple feet I think that's about right uh, you can certainly adjust that however the customers preferences or whatever you want to see there and so we're just going to point the lace and then come up and I think I went in five inches from the end and went ahead and started my bleed there that's going to leave enough opening to get your hand through there and so I'm just doing a simple blood knot um, if you don't know how to do that uh, it's just a you make a cut and then you're going to bring the bottom up through there we're going to go ahead and lace this through our D and then bring our bottom strand up through our cut and you usually want to make that cut if you're doing a blood knot usually try to make my cut about the width about the the length of the cut is about the width of whatever lace I'm doing that's a general general rule of thumb but that usually works nice and then so we'll pull, pull the bottom strand through there make sure that both tips are about even and then you'll take the top strand that came through and you'll make the same cut in that and again pull the bottom strand through and that should uh, end I'm gonna go ahead and do this one with uh, four cuts and so we're gonna basically do two blood knots back to back and so that gives you four little separations in there and it looks really nice uh, just something real simple but you can see the, the single blood knot there and we're going to go ahead and do another one now. So as I said, on this one, I went ahead and did two blood knots back to back, and you can see a little bit different look there. And uh, that looks really good on saddles too. If you're ever putting strings in a saddle, you can definitely double up your blood knots, and it makes it look pretty neat. And you can see my hand passes through there fairly easily, and the strap's not too large or too big and in the way. All right, guys, so there's our wristlet purse. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. The strap, this is very simple. There's definitely more than one way to do this strap. You can come up with something way cooler than this, I'm sure. Like I said, this is a great item to use for your scrap leather. So if you've got a lot of scrap leather around of, of shep leather or something like that, and a lot of your, your, like I said, this was about a five to six ounce, something like that. If you've got a lot of that scrap laying around that's just not really, you don't know what you're gonna use it for and you're sick of making wallets or something, these would probably sell really well. Um, I just designed this thing and haven't made any really to open to the public. I've made one for a good customer uh, right before Christmas, and that's where the idea for this came out. Other than that, I haven't really openly shared this a lot on Instagram or anything like that. So I haven't sold them. I don't know what they'll, they're gonna end up selling for or how many of these I'll make or even if I will take orders for them. But I think they would be a really cool project for anybody that's just trying to come up with something that's kind of neat and different, fairly simple to put together. Um, if you're gonna try to make these, like I said, you don't necessarily have to turn them inside out like I did on this one. This is a nice uh, lightweight, just a suede split like I would use for saddle seating or something like that. And I've got a bunch of that scrap left over because I have to buy a whole piece in a certain color for the particular customer. And then I don't end up using all of it, obviously, for one saddle seat. So I end up with some scraps left over. And so that's where this turquoise came from. But you can use anything. You can use full grain chap leather. You can use uh, some exotics. I've got another one here that I made. This one is out of Cayman. This is a, uh, a turquoise and brown model Cayman here. Um, and you can, if you are looking for some exotics to make a bunch of these out of, if you think they'll do well and you want to do some ostrich or some elephant or something like that, or even some Cayman or American alligator, you can sure uh, check out Lewis Leather Sales. That's who I get all of my exotics from and their link will be down in the description. But on this one in particular, um, it's just a it's it's just a Cayman leather. And so it doesn't, the, the Caymans don't turn inside out quite as well, or at least I haven't found, I'm not an expert with exotics, but I had trouble trying to get my head around turning this one inside out, so I just didn't. I made it the exact same way that we did this one in the video. The only thing different is instead of sewing it inside out, 
I sewed it once I got the zipper sewn and the, the front uh, panels here. I just put it straight together and then sewed around. So as you can see there, you can see my stitch lines. And I sewed that on my Cobra Class 4. Uh, my little Singer machine probably would have sewn through this. It's not very heavy, but I was just kind of worried about it because I haven't worked with a lot of alligator. And so I was just kind of worried that maybe that little Singer with that really fine thread and really fine needle hitting some of this because this alligator, I mean, it's got... The, or the Cayman Crocodile, it's got some really hard cartilage in there and I didn't want to break any needles on my little machine. So I went ahead and sewed it on the big machine. I don't think it looks looks too bad. I kind of like seeing the, the stitching there, but that's real simple. Um, I also lined on this one. I ended up lining my Cayman. I ended up lining it with just, I think it was two, three ounce. It was something like that. It was very thin veg tan leather. I just lined it just to make the inside look really nice. The inside of the alligator kind of looks fuzzy and kind of gross. And so, but that's the only thing different that I did. The first one of these that I ever made, I didn't have this separate, the separation here of two pieces. And so it was just one piece and I fully tooled this and it was all out of veg. And we tooled the whole front and the back and then just simply put it together and put a zipper in the middle, just like we did here, but it was just all one piece. And you can certainly um, adjust these patterns to be able to do that if you want to do it fully tooled, or if you want to make this out of the veg tan leather and then do this out of an exotic like a caiman or an ostrich or something like that, you could have a little exotic cape here at the top and then have your tooling down here at the bottom. You could do away completely with the zipper and do some type of closure. The pattern's very uh, versatile, I think. Like I said, this is my first run at this purse. Uh, I've made, this is, makes three three of these things total. And so um, I think it's really good. If you want the patterns that I did, they're not really that hard to design. Um, the trickiest thing or the best thing that I think that, that, that I did on the pattern was designing the part for the zipper because it's very simple to put that zipper in and that's usually where I have trouble is putting zippers in anything. And so I came up with an easy way uh, to do that. And so there's a companion pack link in the description if you wanna purchase that pattern pack. It is available on our website. You can sure grab that. In the pattern pack, there are some tooling patterns and stuff in there for these panels. Really appreciate all the feedback that we're getting from the vlog. Um, I appreciate all y'all uh, emailing me and contacting me and letting me know how much you're liking that. They're just kind of a fun little video that we enjoy making every week. This project video is probably one of the first ones of the year other than the doctor and bags. I've got more of those kind of coming down that we're gonna be gonna be filming and shooting. And so, but if you've got any ideas on little projects that you're having trouble making or just maybe an idea you want me to maybe make a video with and design a pattern for or something in particular, I'm gonna be glad to, to put that in there as an idea that we may, may do a video of. So that's the purse. I hope y'all enjoyed it. This is a really good project, whether you're starting out or whether you're a little bit further on, it's a really good sale item. I think it's gonna do well. Give it a shot. If you got any questions or have any trouble, be sure and email me. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you can, give us a subscribe. I appreciate y'all. I think that's gonna have to be good. I'm gonna sit here and talk to myself all day.